everyone and welcome back to the channel so in this video we're gonna keep continuing talking about R and then combining HTML CSS JavaScript with our R shiny application we're going to build this little web page uh, that we are uh, grabbing some data from uh, the uh, MapQuest uh, traffic API as you can see here so we're gonna learn how we can uh, call different APIs uh, send get requests and uh, get information back and then we're gonna do some uh, data manipulation in R and then we're gonna use uh, HTML CSS and JavaScript to style our page we're going to use bootstrap to style our table here as you can see this table has all the information that we get from the api and we're gonna use uh, uh, our shiny application uh, basically we'll use the server function inside our app.r file and then everything else related to the UI is gonna be inside HTML file. We'll connect CSS and JavaScript and we do a little bit of things with JavaScript as well so that we can apply the styling that we want. This will be the final uh, product of this video but uh, there is much more that uh, we can do and uh, we'll get back to this later in the next videos and we'll talk more about this but uh, for now, uh, we're just going to focus on a few things that uh, uh, we need to build this page. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so I have RStudio open here. I'm going to create a new project, a new RShiny project. So I'll go to Find, New Project, File, New Project, and a new directory. Here I'm going to select Shiny Application. And I'm going to browse to the directory I want to save this and for the name of my project I'm going to do shiny html api so I'm going to say create project and uh, this is basically going to open my project I have my project folder over here app.r and the shiny html api project and over here my app.r is basically the R boilerplate that we've always seen. If I run the app, it's going to run fine. I have my uh, slider here and a graph, which is what we have over here. So everything works fine. All right, I'm going to open this in browser and take a quick look at uh, this page. If I inspect it, uh, as you have seen before, so we have uh, all these elements in our body tag over here and we have our head over here which is also using uh, some script, some link tag and the one thing that I want you to pay attention is to these uh, jQuery shiny and uh, stuff like that over here because what we are going to do, we are going to create, generate this HTML totally separate from this UI that we have over here. Uh, so this is actually our fluid page over here, which is being converted to uh, this over here. And so uh, if we want to create everything from scratch, we need to bring in these scripts and also these links style shit sheets as well so keep that in mind and uh, for example we have bootstrap stuff also which we will be using so keep that in mind now over here i have vs code also open and i'm under the same project folder over here as well what i'm going to do I'm going to create a folder called www and if you remember that's where we save all our stuff so anything that we like and we add like images or HTML CSS and JS files so over here what I'm going to do is to create my uh, index.html remember this has to be index.html because uh, 
and that's where the shiny application will be looking for your HTML stuff and then I'm going to create my styles.css so I have styles.css and also I'm going to do a script.js so I also have my JavaScript here in case you don't know uh, like how these are connected or things like that uh, if you want to learn more about HTML and JavaScript I'll put a link on the top right corner over here to the videos that I have made so go check those out and uh, hopefully you can come back with uh, more knowledge and follow this video so I have everything here now what we are going to do we're going to get rid of this whole UI section here because we don't want to do any UI in our our application so what I'm gonna do just gonna get rid of this whole thing over here and then since we don't have UI now we need to actually connect this to our HTML file and to do that all you need to do here instead of this UI you need to start typing HTML and it's gonna show you this HTML template like autocomplete so we select that one and then here we will connect to that index.html and that is under our www.index.html so here we tell our shiny app that uh, this index.html file is where you should go and find my uh, UI stuff and since uh, we've gotten rid of the UI stuff we need to make sure our server is also empty over here because it was uh, referring some of our UI elements so this should be good if I save it right now uh, we don't have anything in index.html so once I reload we shouldn't see anything here and we don't see over here also if I reload my body tag is basically empty you can see that there is nothing there I don't even have a like much in my head tag we uh, see some stuff over here but we're gonna have to add more so that we uh, can use shiny and uh, everything else that we saw in the original application that we had so first thing I'm gonna do in my HTML file actually I'm going to just do my boilerplate thing you can start typing HTML since we are in VS code it's gonna give us uh, autocomplete suggestions so you can click on HTML5 and the reason I have selected VS code is because of all these things that we get you could have uh, opened these HTML CSS and JS file in your IR studio as well but I don't really uh, kind of like uh, want to do that because I get all these autocomplete stuff over here with VS Code. So this is the first thing that we do. The next thing is to bring those scripts and CSS files that we talked about. So uh, a couple of things we need to bring first of all and uh, I'm gonna do that right over here so I have my right after this meta tag over here I'm gonna bring my scripts that I had like jQuery and shiny don't worry about what these are like especially jQuery you don't really need to worry about that uh, uh, shiny is uh, what takes what is behind everything that's happening with your shiny apps the graphs charts the connection between elements all those things is being taken care of with this by this uh, javascript file so uh, we are gonna have to bring that over here and then uh, the next thing we need to do is to add our style sheets so we need to add the shiny CSS 
which is uh, what I'm adding right here and uh, that's uh, something also we saw when we originally looked at the uh, app uh, location that uh, our studio created for us before we removed the UI and server stuff and this should be enough so what I'm gonna do in my body over here I'm just gonna bring in an h1 tag since we are going to review some traffic incident data I'm just adding a uh, h1 tag over here and let's go and reload our application sometimes with reload uh, when you add index style like your CSS JS file outside of your R uh, file you need to actually kill the uh, process over here and then run the app again and then there you should see the traffic incidents uh, appear and then if you uh, refresh this page you should also see that over here and you see now you have all your uh, script files the link file your title and everything so that's also all here and you see your h1 tag over here as well let's change this title let's do shiny with html api so just whatever name you want to give it uh, that's fine that's the title of your application and then uh, over here back to actually our uh, index.html file what we need to add we need to connect uh, to this style sheet and a script file and to do that you can go ahead and start typing just keep in mind you should do all that below the scripts that li and link that you added here link tag so I'm gonna do another link once you start typing it's gonna give you like link colon CSS so click on that and uh, it is uh, by default given a style at CSS but remember we need to change it to styles.css because that's the name of our file over here and to make sure it's working I'm going to apply a different color to my h1 tag that I had here so I'm gonna say color red and again these are CSS properties if you don't know what this is uh, go back check out the channel and uh, I put also links in the description box below the video also some cards appear up here so you can go check those videos out now I've saved it let's reload the app and if you don't see it again the changes uh, you might need to kill the process and reopen and you should see this uh, turn into a red basically uh, text over here so now we know that our CSS is also connected if you don't see the change happening while you have your Chrome dev tool over here open you can click and hold on this and then you can do empty cache and hard reload so sometimes there is some caching happening so you could do that if this dev tool is not open you might not be able to see these options so make sure right click and open inspect click on inspect to open it and then that's about it if you see this kind of error that favicon is not there don't worry about it we don't have a favicon added so it's fine uh, always keep an eye on your console over here so this is not a big problem but sometimes you see like other errors that mean that like something is wrong so make sure to keep an eye over here and then back to our index.html file I want to now connect to my script file and for a script file you always add that to the end of your body tag so over here I'm gonna start typing script and then I'm gonna select script with source over here all you need to do is to just type your script.js file 
so we have it and then save this one to check that this works uh, we have looked at this before I have a video that I uh, did on uh, basics of JavaScript go check that one out if you don't know what uh, this is or what I'm, I'm, I'm about to do is so go check that out I'm going to do a console.log and then over here I'm gonna say script loaded so let's save this and again I'm gonna reload the app go back here maybe empty cache and hard reload if you don't see it over here that's probably because since you, again we are writing outside of our, our application over here a lot of the time you need to actually stop the process over here and then run the app again going back to uh, Chrome you should see that script loaded is in your console so that means my script file is also connected to my uh, HTML file and now everything is connected basically all right next thing I'm gonna do is to connect bootstrap if you remember the original fluid page UI that we had that's already using bootstrap and we've talked about it again before so uh, what we need to do currently if you look at the head tag over here which is basically what we have here in our index.html file we haven't added bootstrap so let's go ahead and do that i'm gonna go to get bootstrap.com basically over here and then if you go to docs under introduction there is a quick start over here and uh, in step two you should see this link inside the head tag that we need to actually grab it so copy the whole line all the way basically from the beginning to the end of this line and then once you copy that back in our uh, index.html you need to paste that above your styles.css don't forget it should be going above that and then once we do that i'm going to format the uh, file and uh, to do that I use option shift and F and in Windows I believe it's um, alt shift and F so uh, these are the things that I have discussed in the previous videos that I've put on the channel so go check those things out if anything here I'm saying that you feel like you have no idea what's happening. I have already discussed them before, so I'm not going to repeat those. Go check those videos out. Uh, I talk about VS Code, how you can format your um, file and all those things. So go check those out. Then here I have my uh, CSS for Bootstrap over here and I'm using the Bootstrap 5, the latest version. And then uh, we need to also import these two uh, script lines over here and that needs to be added right above our script.js tag that we added. And I'm going to format it and so we have our bootstrap related scripts right above my custom script file that I have here and then I also added my um, HTML my style sheet for bootstrap over here right above my styles.css file so if I save it right now we should be able to see that uh, again you might want to pause uh, stop this process and run it again and then going back over here in our chrome also we can do that and then you should see in my head tag i have my bootstrap stuff over here and towards the end of my body tag now the reason we uh, brought this over because we want to use all uh, the different uh, um, basically take advantage of all the benefits that bootstrap offers like for example later on we're going to work with tables so here over here tables 
there's a lot of cool things that you can do with just adding a single line of code so we will come back to this later but right now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna actually um wrap everything inside my body tag not the scripts like whatever i have currently which is only h1 uh, inside a container fluid and uh, that's a bootstrap class uh, that uh, will give us some margins when we add that to our layout so i've added it uh, i'm gonna reload probably again need to close this stop that process and go back and again we're always checking everything in the browser and you should see that like this container fluid if i hover over you see the green parts uh, to the right and left of this uh, line that means i have now some margin or padding over there i believe yeah so there it is some padding over there and uh, it should be good to go now that uh, it makes it responsive so always as i make the screen smaller i have a little bit of space between the text and the um more the edges of the screen so we are good there the next thing i'm gonna do we are going to start talking about the api that we are going to use in this video so uh, as i mentioned now we're going to talk about our api and api is uh, short for application programming interface so basically what we do with these apis we get access to data that are available to other um, companies and for other projects uh, for example what we're gonna look at uh, is the MapQuest uh, api and uh, this will give us some information about like traffic data if there is incidents construction and those kind of things and then we can get the data and use them in our website a uh, common API that a lot of people use is the weather API so you can basically use uh, that weather API to see like when it's gonna rain uh, all those things like uh, temperature and things like that but again here we're gonna focus on MapQuest API and for uh, most APIs you need to get some kind of access or key to that uh, uh, API so for this one if you go to developer.mapquest.com and I put these links in the description box below the video you can uh, uh, create a, an account for yourself and then once you do that uh, inside your account if you go to manage keys over here that's where you create your keys now this is a uh, free tier that i'm using right now so i'm not paying for anything but they do have some restrictions as you can see here in the pricing page uh, i can only do like 15,000 uh, transactions per month and that's like more than what I'm, a lot more than what i need so these transactions are basically like requests that you send to that api like if you want to get data or send other information things like that so uh, definitely for our purpose this is more than enough but if you're doing something like for your business things like that this is gonna cost you some money but uh, definitely for us this is gonna be good enough so over here inside manage keys you can click on create a new key give it like an app name uh, whatever your application's name is i'm just gonna do shiny app over here and then don't worry about the callback just hit create over here and once it's created you should see that the shiny app is created and you have now uh, you can see it's approved you have a what i believe should be consumer key and secret and uh, that's what you will be using to get access to their uh, data 
Now these are things that you shouldn't be sharing with anyone. Now if you go to their developer documentation, they have uh, some information about how you can get started and a lot of other things. What I'm looking at right now is the traffic API. And again, I'll put this link in the description box below. It basically tells you what exactly you need to do to get access to the information. And uh, if you look at this section over here, the example request, this is what we want. So we are going to ask basically request data from this um, URL, which is their MapQuest API. And then we are going to provide our key here as we saw, like we have this consumer key over here. And then with the bounding box over here, you can tell what area exactly you want the traffic data for. This is going to be actually north and then we have west and then we have south and then we have east. So those are going to be like the longitude and latitude stuff. So uh, we'll take a look at that. And then you could also filter based on like what data you want. Do you want only construction? Do you want incidents or all of that? We won't be filtering. But again, if you take a look over here, you can see your filters. So there are, they provide four type of uh, data, incidents, construction data, event data, and congestion data. So we won't be filtering, so we'll get all of them. And if you scroll down more, and we will see that uh, the data that we get will have like numbers one, two, three, and four. Uh, if like the data is available for that area, and then uh, we'll take a look more uh, to that. Now, in order to send a request, that's what's called in the, like programming, you're gonna send a get request. And what that means is that uh, you want to get some data from that API. You need to basically copy this whole thing. And uh, as I mentioned, I will not filter. So all the way to here, you can copy it and then inside our R, uh, app.r over here, we are gonna need to uh, install a couple of packages to be able to send requests for API access. One of them is uh, the, I'm gonna stop it right now, and uh, we're gonna do install packages. What I need is HTTR, I will use this for, um, sending uh, basically my request and then I will use JSON light for kind of like uh, receiving the data and uh, make it usable for my R app. So we'll see what uh, that is again. So I'm gonna install these packages. I have already done this, so I'm gonna cancel. For you guys, you will just like go ahead and uh, install these. So I have already installed them. So I do have them right now on my machine. But I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna bring those two libraries over here. So I have HTTR and JSON Lite over here. And then in our server, we are going to do a little bit of work over here. So I'm going to define a variable and uh, store whatever I get from this request that I will send in that variable. So with the HTTR uh, library installed, once you start typing get, and uh, that's all caps basically this is a uh, well th that's all you need it's going to be just get request and then uh, once you do that uh, you can bring in the link that we copied from the map quest api page over here right over here 
Again, make sure your bounding box is what you want. So these are like longitudes and latitudes, max and min. And then for the key over here, I have copied my key over here. So uh, that's what I had and just replace this like capital key over here with that. So I have a uh, question mark a lowercase key all lowercase equals to my key that I got from over here and then this probably is from like the, another key that I had so I can actually go ahead and copy it from over here and replace this one so now that exactly matches that and then for bounding box I will uh, I might have used exactly what they have but uh, you guys can make sure that uh, you use whatever you want here so that's the first step that we do and then uh, to make sure that things are working I'm going to just uh, print this res out and then save it and I'm going to run app so if uh, everything works fine if you have installed the HDTR and uh, you have the right correct key entered over here you should see something like this uh, for your res and that is your response of especially the status of 200 and the content type application so the status of 200 means it was okay the request was sent successfully and the data is successfully uh, received and then uh, another thing that is important is this content type which is application json and that's why we uh, install this library because that's going to help us read the data that we got from here and uh, if you look at their uh, website right underneath this uh, request example they also have an example response this is what you will be getting when you send the response you'll have like incidents which is going to be like an array of all the incidents and then uh, URL and info we don't really care about these all the information the data that we need is gonna be inside this incident so using the JSON light library that I have over here I'm gonna do some manipulation on the incidents array that I got from the res so I'm gonna get the content of the res first of all this is how you do it this is basically why we use the JSON light since this is a JSON file as we saw here and JSON is kind of like an object uh, if you're familiar with other programming languages kind of like an object key value pairs this is like my key and then this is value I have key and value and similarly uh, the rest of it we are going to use the raw to char uh, kind of like function over here and then from JSON which is uh, this JSON light thing and then uh, store the result in data and now if I print my data let's see what we see here i'm going to stop it run the app we don't care about what we see over here because we haven't done anything but over here i should see all these like different um id type severity and all these things that uh, we are actually getting from the uh, api last thing i'm gonna do as i said i just need the incidents so I'm going to grab the incidents from my data and then save everything into a data frame. And so this will be the last thing that we need for our process over here. So I'm going to run again 
and again I don't care about this at the moment and over here I still have all the data that I got from the API and if you look at this uh, you should see like ID type severity event code and all these which are basically all the um, fields that you see here if you scroll down in their traffic API inside the response object you see lat long uh, type severity so like I said the type one two three four one is construction you see like most of these are construction so right now I only have like 41 of them but uh, we'll show these in a table in a few minutes and you'll see all everything there and so all these uh, this information you'll get from the API all right now that we have the data all we need to do is uh, kind of render a table and then show the data there so uh, this is again our uh, stuff our shiny stuff so after my print df over here i'm gonna do uh, an output uh, which uh, we'll get to this in a second with an id of table i'm gonna render table and uh, for now uh, i'm just only displaying like the first 15 columns there are like uh, 16 or 17 i believe there are 16 columns but the last column has some na uh, like uh, not uh, number uh, or like empty cells that uh, we would need to do like some post processing obviously but i just don't want to spend that time right now here i just want to show you how we can uh, connect this table over here to our index html file so uh, i have to find my output to with the idea of table and that's exactly what we need to have in our index.html file so what i'm gonna do right underneath my h1 tag i can add like text a lot of text for example let's just add this one here so uh, some explanation about this uh, um, api so i'm gonna do a p tag over here and simply just copy that text over here now if i save this and let's uh, stop this i'm going to comment this out the print so this doesn't get uh, ugly over here so i'm going to run the app let's save this and we should see like the text over here and uh, that should also show up over here in chrome dev tools so that's all good what i'm gonna do now is i need to bring in the element that will uh, hold the, the table that we are rendering over here if i look at my console that like i don't see anything so uh, that's fine but uh, we don't actually have this table element in our html so this is not uh, showing any tables what I need to do over here, I need to uh, add a div element with ID of table. So if you remember VS Code uh, to do a, a like shortcut for IDs, you type hashtag and then the name of this needs to be exactly what we had here. So table, table, and then click enter. It's going to give me div ID of table. And now this R shiny app is going to grab this element and add the table inside this element. If I save it right now, and just always make sure to stop and run it again, I still don't see the uh, table over here. Uh, I should see the element added you see the element id table is added but there is nothing added to it like inside this and that's because we also need to add a class over here and that is the shiny html output class so this will also be needed so that the connection between the two is now finalized I'm going to save it over here and then run the app again. 
let's see there we go it takes a little bit because it has to send a request and like get the data if i go to my page over here now i see all these stuff over here is table which kind of looks ugly and that's what uh, we're gonna work a little bit on that's why i added bootstrap also so we have like table classes over here that we can add and we can basically make it look much better uh, first thing we're gonna do for this if i scroll down oh and right over here on the right panel when i'm inside these tables over here i can click on the responsive table we want to have a responsive table so it's telling us all you need to do is to add this class to your uh, wrapper where you have your table so this is my wrapper this is called like the parent element i'm gonna add the responsive table responsive class here and uh, again let's close it run up again and uh, we should see a little bit more of like he, it doesn't go all the way to the side see what's happening here if i refresh now it's not going all the way to the side so we have that little like uh, a space over here as well but uh, inside the table i can like uh, scroll to right and left so we can see everything in the table um, let's take a quick look actually to see what this whole table is so i have my p tag the text that i added and then i have my table inside this table this div with id of table i have an actual table this is what this render table is adding so just by writing this line of code we are getting a whole bunch of stuff i am getting like the t head which is my table heading then i have all these table headers i have my table body with all the rows and each row has all these numbers so very easy you uh, that's why uh, like using these data analysis uh, programming languages is really cool you get all these things and all you need to do now is kind of like style the results so that they are uh, better uh, kind of like presentable so a couple things we're gonna do i'm going to go to uh, google fonts so fonts.google.com and uh, we have done this before but uh, go ahead and in here you can um select whatever font you want i have selected roboto and uh, once you select them i can get rid of this play for display so roboto is a good uh, font uh, but anything that you like you can uh, pick i can actually just so that you see how different it will be i'll select this guy over here i'm gonna get rid of all my robotos and then over here i will get my regular 400 and then when you do that on this right side inside the fonts at google.com you should see this link over here all you need to do is to copy it if you don't see this right panel you should like click on this uh, icon over here to see these and then all you need to do is copy the whole thing under the links and in your index.html file right above uh, your uh, bootstrap css just add that over here so i'm going to format again and now i have my fonts uh, it's like a couple of uh, link tags so one over here and then two two link tags and now you have access to the font all you need to do is just copy it from here and then add it to your body tag so i'm going to do body and then over here i am adding that font family again let's stop our process and run it again and we should see the change so you see the change in this 
and then also if I go over here and restart I see the change in the font over here so that's one thing and a couple quick things I like a background of dark for my stuff so I'm going to for my page I added a background of dark and the color is the text color so text color is gonna be white so if I refresh now uh, you see the text color is white but the table text color is not visible what we are going to do we're going to actually use JavaScript for this and uh, I'll tell you why we do that so our table if we go back to bootstrap and scroll up a little bit you'll see all these cool like uh, already styled tables all you need to do is to add these classes to your table and this table is not the wrapper table that we had which was the table like the div with id of table it it is the table element that put that uh, r is adding so remember in our index.html we don't have that table element we have the div which is wrapping that and then this table element with all the stuff in there is being added by, by r so we don't really have access to that in our index file and uh, we need to kind of add those classes from bootstrap to that uh, table element somehow since it's not in the uh, index.html file and it will be added using this r like render table function over here we're gonna have to wait for the element to be added to the page in our page over here and then once it's added we can add those class names to the element and that is only possible using javascript so what i want to have is a table like this with the uh, green lines so all i need is basically this table dash success that will give me the green line i also want this stripe in so that's also one thing i also want to be able to do this hover thing and that's the table hover and let's see there is also the border thing here the table border that i want to add so that i can see the columns uh, also separated from each other properly so this is going to happen in javascript and uh, we talked about javascript how you can uh, grab an element and basically work on it but uh, here i'm gonna also introduce you to a new concept and that is uh, using external libraries or packages as we saw in R over here the HTTR JSON light these were the external libraries that we installed and then used it and we have done it with the uh, JavaScript as well for example I got these scripts for bootstrap and then uh, all these like links that we got for font Google API these are external links that we've been using we're gonna use the same thing this time since we need to wait for this element for the table to load on the page we're going to use a library called arrive.js and this arrive.js is basically uh, watches for your element once it's added to the page you can do whatever you want with it so this is just a simple library i found all you need to do is just co copy script tag over here and i'll put the link in the description box below and then add that right before your custom script.js file so right here i'm adding it i'm going to format again so i have that last one also added over here make it a little bigger so this is like arrive min js exactly what we had here if you do copy script tag the second one okay now 
I have access to that library and each library you can read their documentation how you can use it in here all we need to do is to just say document that arrive and then target the element that we want and then do whatever we want to do after that element has basically added to the has been added to the page so I'm going to do that so I'm going to do document dot arrive and then we'll get back to this in a sec I have a function and then here and this is something we talked about before I have a video about basics of JavaScript uh, so go check that out with callback functions and things like that so uh, over here what I need is to target that element in my page what that element is going to be we know that is going to be a table tag and it's right under my uh, div with the table ID and uh, again uh, we've talked about it in other videos I select the ID using this hashtag table and then space means that was the parent element the child element is the table that I have over here so this is just a table tag right under my table my uh, div with the table ID it's a little bit confusing we could actually go back and change this for example to let's do that for this ID over here I say um, data table oops data table over here and then I should change that over here as well now I save this I save this and then over here I need I will have to change this because the ID has changed the data table now and once we do that all we need to do this is a javascript function and that's adding the class all that's all we needed to do was to add a class and this uh, what i have here if you look at the documentation for that library it tells you that this is basically referring to the newly created element which is the new table that's been added so all you need to do is to say this dot class list dot add this is a javascript thing that it will add these class names to that element in our html file in our uh, document or our web page basically so i have this table right now i have a table shiny table table dash spacing as classes once we do that it's gonna add all these classes to that uh, element and the reason again why we're doing it because just adding those classes will give us all these different styling that we need because of bootstrap i should change this to data table because uh, remember we changed the id to data table over here so save it and then let's redo it run app and then now my table has all the um, styles that I wanted to be applied to it. Let's go to Chrome over here, and I have my table with all the uh, hover effect. As you see, I hover, it kind of like highlights the row, and then the color background. I have the uh, borders and everything, and I don't I sh you shouldn't see any errors in console except for that fav icon or fav icon that's fine close this and you can scroll to right and left uh, like on your trackpad and you should see all the columns here and then as you scroll down this is all the incidents that we had remember the type was the kind of incident if we go back to the API over here just like a construction so uh, 
over here all these are mostly type one so this is all construction and stuff there is some severity to this like this is a two that means uh, like uh, it has uh, like higher severity and so on so yeah this is uh, basically what we wanted to build and uh, you can like do much more obviously a lot of some of it is our stuff so for example here you can define what uh, columns you want to include here and uh, uh, once you are here you can style your elements like you can change font size for example we change some color and font and things like that so these are the things that you can fix in your styling and we used also javascript to be able to add some classes to this table if we inspect it real quick actually we should see that now we have all those uh, table success table striped hover and border added to it and we had to use javascript for that because uh, r is going to add this class after uh, the page is kind of loaded and then uh, just right underneath this div, div so we didn't have access to it so that we can like add the classes to it so we had to add it after it was loaded Anyways, uh, that's about it. Uh, make sure to play with this and uh, if you have any questions, uh, add uh, like those questions, uh, ask them in the comment box below this video and uh, you can always go to the latenightcoders.club um, community there and join the community under the new web dev data. Uh, stuff you can ask your questions so i'll put the links to those uh, pages as well i hope you learned something new and uh, if you liked the video make sure to hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to the channel i will be doing a lot more of these things and we will uh, see how uh, cool what cool things uh, we can do with these uh, uh, web development techniques so uh, thanks a lot again and I'll talk to you guys later.